Hello guys, I am Yadagir Reddy and welcome to the series of Java for Obsolete Beginners. In this video, we will discuss about data types in Java. So generally, this data types term will come into the picture when we are talking about variables, right? So while creation of variable, we need to specify the data type also, right? So what is a data type? A data type is a type of data that will tell the compiler what kind of value a variable can store. Okay. So that means while creation of variables, we specify the data types. That is because we need to tell the compiler like what kind of value this variable can actually store. Okay. So for example, if you are storing 10 value into a variable, you need to specify what this 10 is actually. Okay. You know that it is an integer value, right? So you need to tell the compiler this is an integer value. So to tell the compiler, we specify the data type. So here in Java, we have so many data types. So we will discuss about each and every data type in detail. Okay. So here basically the data types are divided into two types. Those are primitive and non-primitive. So in this video, we'll mainly focus on the primitive data types. Okay. So we are not going to talk much about the non-primitive data types. I'll tell you what are the non-primitive data types also, but I'm not going to focus more into this one because I'm going to cover these things, these non-primitive data types in detail in our upcoming videos. Okay. So for now, we will focus mainly on the primitive. So these primitive data types are again categorized into three types. Those are number type of data types and Boolean type of data types and character type of data types. Okay. So we generally have the numbers, text and decision makings, right? So those numbers will come into number type of data types. Then the decisions will come into Boolean type of data types like true or false. Okay. Only two values will be there and the text will come into character type of data types. So generally the numbers are two types, right? with decimal point and without the decimal point. So for example, 10 and 10.25. So in the 10, we don't have a decimal point. In the 10.25, we have the decimal point, right? So we have two types of numbers. So based on that, again, it is divided into two categories. Those are integer types and floating point types. So if it is having a decimal point, then we call it as a floating point. If it is not having the decimal point, then we call them as an integer types. Okay. So here, this integer type of data types also again divided into four types based on the size, okay? So the first one is byte, then short, then integer, then long. Okay. So all these four will not have any decimal points. They are the integer type of data types. Okay. And the next comes float and double. So this float and double will have the decimal points. Okay. And next we have Boolean and character. This is a single one only. Boolean is a true false condition and character is a single value. So here, whatever I have mentioned, these are the class names. Okay. But while creation of variables, we don't actually use these things. We will not write integer or we will not write character, something like this. Okay. So we are going to use the keywords. Okay. So in Java, we have some reserved words or keywords. So these reserved words and keywords should always be in the lower case only. So the classes should be in the upper case and the reserved keywords should be in the lower case only. So that is why this byte and all are in the lower case. Okay. So here for every class, we have one reserved word. Okay. So if you see for the byte, we have byte. And for the short, we have again short for the integer, we have int. Okay. So like that, we have so many things. So except this integer and character. So everything is same only almost. Okay. Except the first character, right? So next we have non-primitive data types, right? So those are arrays, collections, class and interface. So these four are called as non-primitive data types. So here you must be wondering like where the string is. Okay. So some people say that string comes under non-primitive and some people argue that this comes under primitive. Okay. So basically string is not a data type that you need to remember. Okay. String is a class, but it can be used as a data type. So it is your choice. Like you can put it in primitive or you can put it in the non-primitive also. So let's see how we use these data types and what is the size of each and every data type here and what is the minimum value and what is the maximum value and what is the default value, everything. Okay. So let me open the Eclipse. So here we basically use the data types while creation of variables, right? So first let me create one variable. So I'll go from this one first byte, right? So from byte to this interface. So I will say static byte and I will give the variable name as VN. Okay. So just to generalize. Okay. So I'm going to use the same syntax for every data type here. So here I'm not going to provide any value. Okay. So I will leave it like this. So inside this method, I will create some code. Okay. So here I have created one variable. Okay. I have used the data type as byte and first I am printing the default value. Then I'm assigning some value. And after that I'm printing the actual value. So I have assigned this value, right? So this value should be printed. Then I'm printing the size and minimum value and maximum value of this data type. Okay. So here, let me run the program. 
so here in the right side we have the console okay so in the console you can see the values the default value is 0 so for all this integer type of data types the default value is 0 only okay for the floating point it will be 0, 0.0 because we need to have the decimal point right so here the default value is 0 then I am assigning phi here so it is printing phi the actual value as then the size okay the size is 1 byte so here I did not give any space okay so the size is 1 byte okay so that is why we call it as a byte and the minimum value is minus 128 and maximum is 127 so what is the meaning of this minimum and maximum so below this value you cannot provide and above this value also you cannot provide it to a byte okay so for example if I try to give 128 so 127 is the maximum right so I give 127 I'm not getting any error right so if I give 128 you can see it is showing some kind of error right so that is why we need to always stick to this range okay so that is the range actually so in the negative values also minus 128 it will allow okay but if you use minus 129 it will throw you the error okay so that is how we use the byte so you can use the same program for printing all the rest of the th these things also okay so let me just show you with integer randomly okay and here i need to change this class name integer so let me copy this so let me just print this so here you can see the console let me just drag this console so here the default value is 0 and actual value is minus 128 okay so this is what i have assigned and size is 4 bytes okay and minimum value is this one and maximum value is this one so here you can get to know the sizes for each and everything okay you can execute with same program so i am not executing for all these things okay so let me show you float and double also so for the time being i am not executing but you can practice so float is a floating type of data type right so that means it will have the decimal points so here if i provide 5 6 so it should accept but it is throwing some kind of error right why because for float you need to use the character f here so now it is accepting so i will change this one float okay so let me just execute this so here you can see first the default value is 0, 0.0 that means it is having one decimal right then the actual value is this one so whatever i have entered so here it will not print this f character okay so this is just for understanding the compiler that it is a float value okay the actual size is 4 bytes and the minimum value is this much and maximum value is this much okay so if you execute double so for the double i'll just remove this one you no need to provide eft here okay let me just modify this okay so let me execute this so there are two differences between float and double okay the first one is size so in the float we have only 4 bytes of memory in the double we have 8 bytes of memory and other than that the decimal points okay so after this precision point how many decimal points you can provide in the float it will be restricted to only 7 okay in the double it will be restricted to 15 so that is one more difference so here if you just see so i'm giving more than 7 here right so i'm using the double so if i execute this so i'm getting complete data here right this is less than 15 and above 7 right so that is why it is accepting but if i just change this one to float and i need to provide f here okay so now if i execute now you can see i lost some data here right so it is actually restricted to 5 or 6 or 7 based on the values so it will not take all the digits whatever you are mentioning here so for the double it will be restricted to 15 and for the float it is restricted to 5 6 7 so based on the scenarios okay so next we have boolean so here we cannot print size and minimum value and maximum value for the boolean okay so let me just comment this so now let me just run this here you can see the default value for a boolean is false and here i have assigned true so it is printing true in the next line okay so next we have character so character will store two bits so here if i change this one to char so you need to specify in the single quotes or you can provide the ascii code also here so i'm just providing like this so let me just run this 
So here you can see the default value it is not providing anything but here if you just put the cursor it is printing some empty character right so the default value for a character is a empty character and here i have assigned a so it is printing a in the next line so that is about primitive data types guys so here we have again non primitive data types so these non primitive data types i am not going to talk about now okay so we will look into these non primitive data types in our upcoming videos so these are the sizes okay so the main difference between these all integer types is only the size. So between this byte, short, integer and long, only the size is different. So here it is one byte, here it is two, four, eight. So between float and double, we have two differences. One is size and the other one is after the precision point, how many decimal points you can provide. So that is one more difference. And here the boolean is taking one bit of data and character is taking two, two bytes of data. Okay. So that is for this video guys. If you have any doubts or if you are facing any issues while programming, you can just comment in the comment section below. Thank you for watching. Bye bye.